So far, we've looked at support vector machines in terms of their simplest uh, formulation, and that is the hard boundary classification uh, problem. And in this particular problem, we require all of our training samples in the end to, to show up on the correct side of the boundary that we end up choosing. In the soft boundary classification uh, approach, we actually start to relax this constraint. So, so in particular, there are lots of different problems out there where we don't have a perfect uh, linear solution that allows us to have a boundary that separates the positive examples from the negative examples. We'd like to explicitly incorporate this into our formulation, but still maintain some sort of a sense of uh, maximum uh, margin. So the approach is to introduce a new set of variables, and th these variables uh, allow us, first of all, to explicitly label individual training samples as to whether or not they have to be on the correct side of the margin. And if they don't, then they produce uh, an error that we have to accommodate. So, so now we really have a couple of different pieces to our objective function. We certainly want to minimize our squared weights, which is what maximizing our, our boundary is supposed to be doing. But we also want to really, in some sense, minimize this classification uh, error. And this introduces yet another hyperparameter, and this is uh, a capital C, is the standard uh, parameter name for this. And that's going to capture this balance between these two different components here. So let's look at some inspiration and then talk about the math. All right, so let's look at a little bit of inspiration here. So before we had a, a scenario where we had some positive examples and a set of uh, negative examples as well. And in this particular scenario, it's really easy to choose a linear boundary that separates the two. But what happens when we uh, end up with, say, a negative example over here? And let's put uh, a couple of positive examples uh, out over here. In, in this scenario, there is literally no dividing line between the positives and the negatives. If we ignore those three that I just added, a nice boundary is one that runs right down the, the middle of this channel here. And let me draw that in. So there it is. Let me adjust its position. And it has uh, some margins. And again, I'm ignoring the the uh, the new items here. So there's there's nominally one margin there. Let's duplicate that and move that over to here. And again, these run parallel to the uh, dividing line. Don't have those margins exactly correct, but um, but it gets the idea across here. So. For, for most of the positive examples, they fall in the upper left, and most of the negative examples, they fall to the lower right. Um, but we do have uh, several cases where we have uh, a, a misclassification. So this negative here, this is, uh, this is misclassified. Um, and its error, it's not relative to the dividing line. It's actually relative to the boundary that it's supposed to be over. So its, re so it's error is this magnitude here. So this is error with respect to the, the boundary, in particular the boundary that matters to it. And these positive cases also have uh, some errors. So here's, here's the error for that first positive case, and here's the error for that, uh, that other positive case. So again, those positive cases are measured relative to the positive uh, boundary. Right now it's time to actually formulate the, the mathematics for this. And what we're going to do is introduce a new set of uh, variables, in particular uh, the standard u name for these variables uh, is zeta. So that looks like this. So this is zeta for some j item that measures this, this length here, how, how far off of the boundary that we're supposed to be, that the sample actually is sitting at.
this becomes yet another variable that we get to uh, select. So we're going to minimize, and we get to choose our Ws, we get to choose B, and now we get to choose our, our set of zetas. And the first piece here is the term that, that we've already uh, looked at with the hard boundary case. So this is just minimizing the squared uh, coefficients. And then we have a regularization parameter, C. And finally, uh, the other term here, this is over uh, our set of, uh, our total set of samples. So there's one of these zetas for every, for every training uh, item. So, so we're just taking a, a sum of all of our errors. So the purple, the purple lines here, those count as real uh, errors. But for the cases where our positive and negative samples are on the correct side of the line, our zeta is going to actually be zero. As I said, C is our regularization parameter. And it's going to allow us to control the, the balance between the left-hand side here and, and the right-hand side. So how important is it for us to minimize these errors? All right, let's talk about the constraints. So before, for every training sample, we had to uh, satisfy this constraint here, and now I'm doing the very compact form. So that, that's the, the hard boundary case, and the little addition here is, is this uh, zeta uh, j. And the other constraint is that all the zetas must not be negative. And that's also for every j. So, so the zetas can be zero, they can be positive, but they can never uh, be negative. So just a little bit of interpretation here. When zeta is equal to zero, this implies that the sample is on the correct side. And when zeta is, is greater than zero, this implies that the sample is on the incorrect side. So we very well could have a positive example uh, sitting right here in our training set. So it's within the margin, but on the correct side of the decision line. In this case, there is a real uh, error here that's this length right here. And now let's talk about the meaning of, of C. So when C uh, is equal to zero, Errors can be anything. And, uh, and this means that uh, the solution that the algorithm finds can put the training set elements on either side of the, uh, of the dividing line. For C, something greater than zero, this implies that errors matter. So we're going to punish errors. And as C approaches infinity, this is the, the case of having a hard boundary. So we're returning to that hard boundary algorithm that we had before. So, so when we're actually picking this regularization parameter, I think for, for the scikit-learn tools, the default value is one, and, and we're probably going to be increasing uh, from there, uh, and it's not uncommon to see 1,000 or 10,000 as, as a choice there. 
Um, but as with most regularization parameters, at some point you, you get to a situation where making changes to it either don't help anymore or they make things worse. Okay, let me say a couple things about mapping to the QP standard form. The, the new thing that we've added in terms of constraints are uh, these guys right here. And these are already essentially already in the, the QP standard form. There's a, a small transformation that, uh, that we require in order to get to the less than or equal to form. So now we have uh, a, one constraint. We, we actually have now two constraints for every training set uh, element. We have a, a constraint uh, for where that training set element fits relative to the deciding line or the deciding boundary. And then we also have a constraint that talks about the sign of the error. OK, so, so that's the, the mapping for the constraints. And then the, the extra little piece, um, remember the QP standard form is, uh, is uh, 1 half P transpose HP plus F transpose P. These terms here exactly fall into the, the linear component of the standard form. So the, the F, the, the F's actually is just a vector of, uh, of C's. And then the, uh, the P's, actually it's a combination of C's and zeros. For the, for the zeros, those are the variables that correspond to W and B. And for the C's, those are the, the elements that correspond to the, the zeta uh, variables. But, but the point is that this is just a, a linear component for our cost function. All right, let me make one more point. Uh, you're going to be seeing this this idea called hinge loss. And the idea here is that the loss is uh, zero when on the correct side. And positive when, uh, when not. And in particular, the magnitude is is related to this distance from how far away we are from the margin boundary. And uh, what this looks like graphically is I have a, an error here. And that's zero error right there. And, and this is error relative to the margin boundary. So with, an, with a, a zero error, our loss is, uh, is zero. And everywhere we fall uh, on the correct side, we're going to have a loss of zero. But once we trip on to the right-hand side here, we have a positive error. That means our loss is, is going to look like this. So it's, it's, uh, our loss is equal to our error uh, over on the right-hand side and on the uh, the left hand side any any error any negative error translates into a zero loss and and this is exactly the type of uh, scenario that we have uh, with this uh, particular formulation here our errors are constrained to be greater than or equal to zero so we're not ever really falling on the left hand side of that figure uh, but uh, once we trip onto the right hand side away from zero then our loss is related to the uh, linearly to the error. All right, so that wraps up the intuition behind our soft boundary SVM approach. Uh, this, the common term for this is called SVC, support vector uh, C, uh, C referring to that regularization parameter that allows us to introduce some amount of error. Uh, next up, it's time to start talking about nonlinearities and what we can actually accomplish uh, with those, uh, with our support vector machines.